So good afternoon, everyone. Uh, welcome to one more uh, Archicad user day. So today's topic is about uh, building better with custom library. Uh, I'm Marcelo Moring, the business development manager for Graphics of Singapore and Malaysia. And uh, we would like to thank you all for joining uh, this uh, event today. And before going to the, the topics of today's event, I would like to invite uh, Mr. Edmund Lau, our managing director, to do um, the welcome address and uh, put this event into perspective. So, Edmund, please. Thank you very much, Marcelo. Yeah, good afternoon, everyone. So, uh, welcome to our Archicad User Day. So first, uh, allow me to begin by introducing you to two of our new members of the team, uh, Carmen Leong, our Senior Business Development Manager, and Wima Kumar, our BIM Consultants. Can Carmen and Wima turn on your camera and to show your face? Yeah, thank you. Both of them joined us during the first quarter of this year. And prior to joining us, Carmen has worked in a software company providing construction management solution and she has worked closely on BIM-related projects. Wima is a structural engineer, and in his previous role, he has done research and development work in the area of BIM, and definitely helped to fill the gap in our team in the aspect of engineering knowledge. With the add-on of the headcounts to our current team, this will certainly further strengthen our team serving both the Singapore and the Malaysia market. We are extremely delighted to have all of you with us today, and with the current pandemic situation, we want to stay connected and we want to continuously to listen and engage with all our users. So last year, we were all riding on the new norm through digital communication and the same will go on for this year. In view of this, we have launched many new initiatives since last year to enhance our training, support and user experience. Just to name a few among other initiatives, we launched our Graphisoft learn portal for online learning where we have materials from self-paced learning to instructor-led courses the learn portal can elevate our user knowledge from a beginner all the way to a beam manager level my colleague rima later will touch on on this topic in this session we have also conducted many joint technology workshops with the local authorities and association like bca pem SIA on key industry topics. Our global campaign, Archicad keeps getting better. We will communicate our commitment to listen and improve our solution through continuous software enhancements. And all of these key initiatives are critical to our user as we strive to bring our user experience to a whole new level. Most of these activities are recorded, just like this one. And you can just go to YouTube channel by doing a search with the keyword Archicad Singapore or Archicad Malaysia. So some of you may ask, why is there a user day? Since there are so many technical workshops. To answer you, our user day is primary for Archicad user. And the content is put together with the intention of enriching our user with knowledge, with updated BIM approach and methodology. Most of the topics that we have put together is gathered from the feedback from our users. Do you know that 90% of the participants in this event are Archicad users? While we do also welcome some guests to join us. Unlike a technical workshop, our user day usually have a networking session. The user day event also serves as a platform to facilitate exchange of information among our community members, whether on work-related topics or just a casual catch-up session and how we would like to do this in a virtual platform. We are opening a happy hour session after the main program, and our team will be around to interact with all our users here. To lighten up and inject some fun into the user day, lucky draws will also be given, so stay with us throughout. I hope you enjoy this webinar, which my team has specially put together for you. Let us now begin the webinar with the first topic, Archicad Object Making Without Coding. Allow me to pass the mic to Wimao and he will take you through the topic. Wimao, over to you. 
Uh, hello everyone. Thank you for joining us today. Thanks Edmund for passing it on to me. So for today's presentation, my topic is object making with HackyCAD. For quite some time, well, HackyCAD objects can be made using uh, GDL programming, but now we have multiple ways to create the HackyCAD uh, objects without using GDL one by one uh, of them today. Uh, so before going to the methods of creating HackyCAD objects, I'll show what are HackyCAD objects and their file formats, uh, how they are going to be added to the project, and how they can be shared with the other stakeholders within and outside the project. So HackyCAD objects, as you can see here, are parametric, meaning when you change the properties, uh, they tend to behave accordingly. Uh, they can also be edited graphically using the hotspots that are available on 2D and 3D. So the structure of HackyCAD object has 2D and 3D. Uh, which are separate entities and they tend to behave together with the parameters linked to them. And inside Archicad, the elements that are using the objects are doors, windows, and the ones uh, inside the highlighted box here. Uh, all the MEP objects are uh, using the Archicad objects, and also the 2D objects like live label, sections, elevations uh, can be created using the Archicad objects. And for the file formats, we have GSM file format and the LCF file format. GSM is the uh, individual Archicad library object, and the LCF file is the collection of all these uh, library objects as one container file. So for adding objects into the project, we are we can do it by multiple ways. By adding local library, meaning uh, adding the folder containing the library objects into the project, and then the BIM cloud library from the BIM cloud, and we can add objects to the embedded library. Uh, here is a link for the help center article that uh, explains the uh, multiple ways and the points to be noted while adding objects to the Archicad uh, project. So the point here to be noted is uh, we can use our BIM Cloud library and the local library. Uh, it is all recommended not to use embedded library because it adds the size of the uh, Archicad project. Uh, so it, for the better performance, it is, it is rec recommended not to use the embedded library. And also it is recommended to remove all the unnecessary libraries uh, Archicad objects uh, using the projects, we can save the project as a PLA file. Uh, so it's the archive file which includes the Archicad objects inside, and we can share it to the external parties. Or within the project, uh, we can share using PLN file, which is the, uh, the meaning we are expecting the internal parties to have access to the libraries. So here I'm going to show the multiple ways of creating Archicad objects. Uh, here is the first way to use uh, standard Archicad tools. So using the standard Archicad tools, we can create 2D symbols like not symbol, element tags, floating dimensions, uh, and, and so on. And 3D objects, furniture, appliances, etc. So for, for creating this, the workflow is to create the uh, element geometry using the default Archicad tools like morph, walls, labs, etc and then select all those objects and then go to file and then go to library and object go to save selection as and choose the option from here depending on the need so we can save it as door window mep part and much more and after that if, if at all you want to change the 2d represent we can place the object inside the project select it and then go to file go to libraries and object and then open the object so once when it is open, it is in the edit mode. Here we can go to 2D symbol here, and then you can edit the 2D representation. So here are some examples. Uh, this is a not symbol. Uh, we are using uh, polyline and text and hotspots to create this. And after creating this, which is shown in the left side, select everything and then save it as an object. And after saving it, it is uh, available for using as a single object, which is on the right side, having multiple hotspots. You can stretch, uh, expand, and then uh, use it in 2D. The other 3D example, where uh, column tools and slab tools were used to create the tool. Uh, but if you see the 2D representation on the left side, uh, it's not as intended. So we can change the 2D representation as I told earlier. So create the object and then place it inside the project. Go to the uh, go and open the architect object in the edit mode and then uh, change the 2D representation as per intended. So the other way of creating architect object is window maker for windows and uh, doors. So it is a add-on which can which comes along with the SSA goodies. So here is the link from where you can download the add-on, uh, and it is used to create doors and windows. 
but this uh, cannot be saved as a gsm file but it can be copied inside the same uh, aggregate project where it is created and it can be copied to multiple instances uh, here's a short video where i'm going to show how to use uh, window maker tool so here i use uh, the window maker tool comes along with a, a lcf file which is a window maker file make sure you are uh, loading the correct version of the lcf file into your archicad project and i'm going to create a new wall which will hold my door and window which i'm going to create now so after that just go to the window maker so i'm i'm giving the size as 1800 and the uh, height as 1900 with a cell height of 200 and column and row 3 by 3 so before creating the uh, window i'm just adding it to the favorites so that i can export and import it whenever required so i'm going ahead to place my window so whenever you see the dimensions around it it means that we are in the edit mode so when we select we can see the multiple hotspots at each frame so when we want to man manipulate the size of these uh, panels we can use the hotspots to manipulate so if i'm uh, wanting to change the size of the horizontal uh, panels i'm changing and then entering the value which will affect the bottom uh, panel so now i'm changing the next frame object which is changing the other uh, panels so in order to remove the frame objects i can just hold the hotspot and then move it outside the window so that it is removed and if at all i want to create a new frame use the frames option in the user interface and then connect the frames to create a new frame frame object so the panels get divided so now i'm going to remove this so that i can later change it to sliding window so the top three panels i'm going to make it as top hung and then the middle one i'm going to change it to slide and the bottom is two are going to be fixed so having created the uh, panels and i'm going to change the texture of frame and after changing the texture i need to change the texture of uh, panels so i'm using uniform surfaces to change everything in one go so now my window is ready so i can finalize changes and then use this window inside my project and now i'm going to create a door with a lower window adjacent to it i'm giving the size of the door width as 1200 and the height as 2100 i'm going to make the sill height zero and i'm going to have a two by one layout so after adding to the favorites i'm going ahead to create my door so now the door is in the edit mode so i need to manipulate the size of the frames so i'm uh, moving the hot spot for the frame which i want to increase the size so i'm entering the value here and then uh, changing the size so the left side uh, panel i'm going to change it to a lower window so i'm increasing uh, the size here yeah. so having changed the panels i'm going to change the panel material so for that i'm changing the door panel and then clicking the door in the user interface and if you see here the bottom frame object is removed automatically because it's a door and then i'm selecting the window panel and changing to lower window and for changing the door uh, leaf i can go to the door leaf setting and choose the style from the available options there having done all that i can go ahead to change the texture of uh, panels and frame here i'm going to choose wood and i'm going to choose the frame and i'm going to change the texture so now since this door has been created using the window maker tool this is classified as window inside the object settings so select the door and then go to the object settings to change it to door so now once after we change it we can check the element schedule for doors and windows 
So now the door is classified under the doors. If uh, it is not classified as door, it will not be appearing here. So we should make sure when it is a door, it should be reclassified. So again, now if I wanted to edit any of my uh, object, the window maker, uh, then I have to select the object and then go to the window maker and then click edit selected. So again, it goes to the edit mode. We can do the changes, whatever is required, and then uh, finalize the change. So now I'm going to change the swing of the door and then finalizing the change. So that is uh, for window maker. And the other method to create Archicad objects is by Paramo. Paramo is relatively a new tool, uh, which is node-based parametric object, fully a node-based parametric object creation tool. And it's again an add-on, which can be downloaded from the uh, option, I mean, uh, the link given on the screen. So the objects that are created using Paramo can also be used in uh, different missions, having an Archicad without having the Paramo installed. So it is uh, currently it's available on Mac also now. Earlier it was only available on Windows. So now it is available on both. And uh, for this demo, I'm going to show a sun shading device that was created using uh, I mean Paramo. Uh, this sun shading device is going to be stimulus to the horizon of sun in the altitude of the sun. So here, if you can see, I'm creating this uh, uh, sun shading device using multiple nodes inside Paramo and then using it inside the uh, in their project. So before seeing uh, how to see the object has been created using Paramo, we'll see the sun study of this object. So for uh, creating the sun study, go to documents, uh, creative imaging, and then create sun study. So in the create sun study dialog, just input whatever is required, save the simulation sun study. So here is the video which shows the simulation of sun, which is going around the building. And if you can see the sun shading devices are changing and depending on the sun's altitude and sun's horizon. So let us go ahead and see how to do this in Paramount. So before seeing that, let me explain behind the sun shading device so the big circle here represents the orientation of the shading devices in the uh, building so whenever the sun is oriented at zero degree the left 60 degree and the right 60 degree of the object uh, of the objects in the building should be reactive to sun so the other other objects which is away or which is out of reach of the sun should always be kept horizontal to include to, to bring in maximum light inside the building so here is an Another example where the sun is oriented at 40 degree, 45 degree azimuth and the left 60 degree and the right 60 degree of, of inside this stretch will be reactive to sun. The others outside will be horizontal to bring in maximum light. So this is the user interface for Paramo where we have node inputs here on the left which can be brought inside the working panel, the white space, and then it has a preview of uh, object that is being created. So I'll show a video here where we can, uh, where uh, it can show the object creation using Paramo. So from here to open the object in Paramo, select the object that you want to open in Paramo and then go file, library and objects and open selected Paramo object. So inside Paramo, you can see that the object was created using the nodes connected to each other. And you see in the preview window, there is a central portion, which is the sun shading device that is going to be reactive to sun. In the other two sides, we have the holders, which is non-reactive. So yeah, for doing this, we are uh, creating the node, placing the nodes and uh, connecting them. So we have two here, the sun shading device and the holder. So let's go ahead and see how the sun shading device is created. So here I'm using the profile extruder where I've created a profile myself for this sun shading device. So I'm replacing the profile extruder node and then connecting the profile that was created by me. So after this, when I uh, place this extruder, the object get placed in the origin of the uh, project and the origin of uh, uh, Paramo object creation. So if you see here, I'm removing the transformation. I'm showing the uh, 
the extrude file that is created. So it's kept at origin and it grows along the positive directions of uh, all the axes. So in order to make it horizontal and to bring it to the center, I need to use rotation and move nodes and I need to combine them. So here, if you see, I'm rotating in X direction to 90 degree. And if I just connect this rotation and to the profile extruder, it just rotates, but it's not bringing the object to center. So in order to bring them to center, I'm using move. So let me go ahead and show move. So here we have a move option with uh, X, Y, and Z offsets. So for all those offsets, I'm using the sizes of uh, profile and the size of the object, uh, the global uh, object size, uh, so with, with this, which is the dimension one. And it's happened to be the height of the profile extruder. So when I rotate it, it becomes the width of the object. So I'm connecting all of them to the move uh, node and then combining the transformation. So it brings my object to the right location. That is to the origin. So having created the geometry of my uh, object, now I have to go and make it reactive to the sun's azimuth and altitude. So for that, as I told earlier, I'm subtracting the sun's azimuth with the library part rotation angle and then passing it on to the cosine node to find the value. So I'm comparing it with cos 60 degree, as I told earlier. So I need only the objects within the 60 degree reach in both directions to be reactive. So for that, if it is greater, I'm going ahead and going to rotate the shape of the sun shading device based on the uh, sun's altitude. If not, I'm just going to have it horizontally. So the visibility option is used here to manipulate the uh, sun's reaction in the object's reaction for sun's azimuth. And after that, I need to use sun's altitude uh, for rotating the uh, sun shading device. So inside Archicad, the sun shading device or tend to rotate uh, in anti-clockwise direction. So in order to make my device rotate in clockwise direction, I'm adding minus 90 to my sun's sun's act and then making it negative so that it rotates in clockwise direction. So having created the sun shading device, now I need to create the folders on both sides. So for those, I'm also using the profile extrude here. So if I remove the combination of transformations, you can see that they are created on the center of the origin. So now I, now I have to use the combinations of uh, transformations to move them to different locations. So if you can see here, I'm using the rotation to rotate it to right position and then using the move option and using the width of uh, the uh, entire sun shading device to move it to the right location. And here I'm using moving sh move shape, which is different from move. If I use move, it's just uh, moving the object. But if I use move shape, it's going to create a copy of the object in the uh, moved location. So for that, I'm using move shape, creating two of them. So after creating this, I'm going back to the project, uh, adding all these devices to the project, and then uh, I can do the sun study or I can do the testing. So for doing the testing, go to 3D window, right click, use 3D, options and then uh, I'm going to change here the altitude to 60 degree and then the azimuth to 60 degree and if you click watch clearly my sun shading device will rotate accordingly when I'm building so if you see here yeah when the sun comes uh, directly above that it uh, tries to rotate and give maximum shading to the building so yeah, this is how I can test for multiple locations, whether if it is working perfectly fine. So I'm changing the azimuth to 180 now. And if you see here, the horizontal sun shading devices will rotate. Yeah. So the next method to create object is the library part maker. Again, this is an add-on which can be downloaded from the link given on this window. So here it is using 2D and 3D Archicad uh, tools to create the library parts. So the library part maker uh, allows us to represent 2D and 3D information in multiple levels, like the level of details, uh, like schematic, simplified, and detailed. And using this tool, we can create generic objects 
We can create doors, windows, skylights, lamps, and MAP library paths. So here is a short video of how it can be used to create projects, I mean, library objects. So we are using the library part uh, maker template that comes along with the add-on. So if you open the project using the library part maker template, uh, we have multiple examples inside here. We can check them and then uh, we can create the project, uh, we can create the library or object. So let me go ahead and create a library object for demo and then later we'll show our door example inside this uh, all these uh, library parts. So for going to design, design extras, library part maker. Here we have multiple sections. Uh, we need to go one by one to create our library part. So here I'm adding a new library part name, uh, pedestal column, and then I'm going to create, uh, assign a mark or design area. I'll click mark design area, and then I'm going to mark the area where I need to create my library part. So zooming into my uh, library part location, I need to create my 3D and 2D objects and their different representations and assign them with proper assignments presentations so first i'm using morph tool of course we can use any uh, basic archicad tool i'm using morph here to just create a one meter by one meter by one meter uh, pedestal column and after that i need to i'm going to copy it to the new location to edit it a bit further to add more information to it so this is going to be a second uh, level of information for the same object so here I'm going to 3D to edit the shape. So let me just fast forward a bit. I'm basically creating grooves on both sides of the object to add the level of information into my uh, object. So for the further one, I need to copy it to the new location. I'm going to add holes to this. So if you can see here, I'm just using morph tool, the options in uh, pet palette to create the holes. So after creating uh, 3D, I need to create the 2D representation for each of this 3D. So I'm using a uh, magic wand to create the polyline and then copying it to the new location. Again, I'm using uh, object fill to fill it with the material. So after creating, I need to place the origin for each uh, representation. So here I'm using the level dimension tool to denote the uh, origin. Yeah. So after placing the origin, I need to uh, change the material of this. See, so here, if you can see, the materials that are having 000 are uh, coming along with this template. So whatever material you're using, if you're going to use here, uh, it is going to create the uh, parameters with the same name. So if you're using the other uh, materials in this place, you need to change the name accordingly uh, in the parameters. I'll show later the parameters where you need to change the name. So after this, I'm uh, selecting everything to change the Archicad, uh, to change the Archicad layer so that when you're using a new project, uh, there will not be any problem. There is uh, no layer available. So after creating, I need to assign each and every representation with proper assignment. So here we have multiple assignments uh, like 3D full, schematic, simplified, like 2D, the same we have. And we also have other options like uh, handles uh, and uh, door lines, swing lines which we can use to do the assignment. Later, I'll show the door. During that, I'll explain that part. So here I'm uh, assigning the representation to each uh, object I created. So it's 3D model full, and for 2D, it's uh, schematic 2D, which is low. And here, this is medium. And this is full 2D representation. So having assigned the representation, I can use the highlight option to check whether the representations are correctly assigned. Okay, so after checking the uh, assignments, I can go ahead and assign properties 
which is the default archicad properties and go to the details if you need to change the name and the author name if you want to give you can give and later add a picture to the object so for adding the picture to the object i'm just going to 3d and then taking a screenshot of it and then saving it in my local file and then adding the picture to the object so after adding the picture i'm going to check and save and selecting the part type here it's the object so i'm using the object and then i'm going to 2d and checking and if there are any assignment issues the checking will be not uh, it will show issues here so uh, if the issues are cleared just go to the parameters here as i told earlier the parameters if you're using different objects uh, different uh, materials you need to change the material name here according to the project uh, according to the object you're creating and then go ahead and save it in your embedded library and save it in your local library before using it into the project so i'm currently just having it in my embedded library for demo purpose and so i'm going ahead and placing this uh, pestle column inside the project so it gets placed so yeah so it's currently having the uh, 3d full representation and 2d full representation so in order to manipulate the information the level information just go to model view options the miscellaneous settings for library then go ahead and change the four plan and 3d uh, representation to whatever is required depending on the stage of the project we can show simplify and change it to a simplified or the schematic version a box just a box was showed So in order to manipulate the representations of individual objects, go to the object settings and change the 2D level and 3D level here. So only that particular object gets affected. Okay, so now uh, let us go ahead and check our uh, example of door. Go back to the layer, select the object and then zoom. You can go to, it automatically goes to that particular uh, library object. So after this, let me show the assignments of uh, the underlines and the swing lines. So they are using this lines using Morph tool. So the other objects, I mean, the other parts of this library object is also created using Morph. And using highlighting options, uh, you see the red line that's highlighted, which is an opening line handle full. So if you want to check the other uh, things, just select it and click highlight it gets highlighted automatically depending on the assignment so while creating we need to be sure uh, you're you're you assigning the representations properly to the parts so i'm just checking it and if you go here the objects that are created so the, the material that are used here are having the names so we need to uh, manipulate this if you are using different templates if you're using the same template and the objects from the same template it's it's okay so and then i need to so that's a uh, library part maker and we can also bring in objects from other external sources and let's see one by one so here we have a BIM, BIM components website. Here we can, uh, this is handled by Graphisoft. So we can just go to the object setting library, I mean object setting uh, dialog and just use the keyword to search the object. So whenever you scroll down and if you are able to see this globe option below the objects, it means that the availability, if it is, means it is from internet and it is, uh, you check for it's free, you can download it to the embedded uh, library and then use it in your project. So if your machine is not having internet access, go ahead with the other machine and go to this website, BIM Components website, and then you can download the objects and bring it back to your machine to use in your projects. So the other uh, website is BIM Object website, where you can uh, download uh, lots of library objects. So using this link, you can access the website. So while importing objects from these uh, websites, you need to be very careful with the object. So if you see the object here, it's triangulated, meaning the object's geometry is not properly created. So this object is having uh, multiple polygons, uh, 
which is very similar to having large number of uh, windows, large number of columns, uh, slabs, everything. So having this one object is similar to having large number of other objects. So in order to uh, have a better performance, it is recommended not to use such type of triangulated objects in your project. So uh, the other option is to bring objects from Revit. We have uh, two ways to bring objects from Revit. One is using the RFA file and then importing it into the uh, KiCad project. So for that, you can scan this uh, QR code and uh, download the add-on. And the other option is to use IFC method. So for that IFC method, you need to install the add-on inside Revit. And for that add-on, you can use uh, you can scan this link download the add-on and insert i mean uh, install it in Revit. so let us see one by one uh, how to do this so this method of importing rfa to gdl objects is mainly used for architectural elements and structural elements so do do that just install the add-on and go to file library and your objects and then import rfa as gdl object just select the rfa file and then import it to your project so while importing uh, the user will be prompted to select the library part type and then I'm here selecting object Clicking import So the other uh, option is IFC method which is mainly used for MEP elements We are using this method for MEP elements to, because we need to have the connectors uh, Created in Revit to be uh, maintained in Archicad object when it is imported. So for that uh, install the uh, plugin that was uh, created by Graphisoft inside Revit and then place an MEP object in an empty project, so MEP element in an empty project, and then export it as IFC using the plugin given. So the plugin is available in uh, add ons, uh, export to Archicad uh, option. So after exporting it to IFC file, open the IFC file as a new project and then save it as a GSM file locally. So to do that, go to file, open and open. So you can choose the IFC file and then uh, the IFC, the object is inside the project. So after that, select the project and then save it as GSM file locally. So the other option is to bring SketchUp objects. So for that, we can go to this website shown on the screen and then uh, download the SketchUp objects and then use file interoperability merge and merge from file option to import it inside Archicad project. So while you are downloading, please be careful to download just the version of uh, SketchUp projects until 2017, 2019, sorry, uh, 2019. So currently, Archicad is not able to handle uh, 2020 version of SketchUp projects. So just download uh, uh, 2019 version. And the other option is Rhino Grasshopper. So this is again an add-on. So we need to have Archicad and Rhino Grasshopper running on the same machine. So just download the uh, Head on using the link given on the screen and then establish the connection between them. To establish the connection, go to File, Interoperability, Grasshopper Connection. So after starting the connection, go to Rhino Grasshopper, create the geometry. Again, the Rhino Grasshopper is a node based tool, so we can use multiple nodes to create geometries like uh, uh, etc. and then uh, pass it on to the object settings. So from the object settings, we can use the object node to place the object into the Archicad. So after that, we can use the Archicad object into the projects. And having seen all the methods uh, to create and to import uh, Archicad objects into the projects, let us see uh, library management. Uh, as I told earlier, LCA file is a container file containing all the library objects. And here we have a LCA file, which is analogous to zip file, where we uh, you know, uh, zip all the uh, folders and files to zip file and then pass it on to others for easy handling. Similarly, we can uh, uh, have this folder structure inside the LCF file and then share it with others as a single file. And uh, the important thing here is the end users may not be able to modify or delete the content unless it is extracted. Since it's a single file, the end users can just simply use it, use the objects inside the project. And uh, it also enhances the speed, uh, speed or loading and it's easy management. So here is a help center article where you can have uh, multiple articles on uh, how to do the library management. Uh, so here we have the library manager. To access the library manager, just go to file, library and objects, uh, library manager. 
So inside the library manager, you can add the uh, folders which is having the objects using the add option available. And while you're adding, make sure the folder is having only the library objects. Uh, if the uh, if added to the project and it makes the project heavy. So for the better performance, it is recommended to just have only the uh, library objects inside the folder when you are loading it. So after loading it, you can use it inside the project. If you want to create an LCF file out of the uh, objects that were loaded, uh, you, you just go to File, uh, Library and Objects, Create Container. So you'll be prop popped up to create, uh, choose the uh, libraries that are loaded. Uh, so you can choose a library and then click Create to create the LCF file. After creating LCF file, if at all uh, you are required to change, uh, do some changes in it, just go to File, Library and Objects, Extract a Container. So the user will be prompted to choose the LCF file and then the file get extracted. You can do the changes inside that and then uh, recreate the LCF file using the options shown in the previous slide. So the last piece of information that I want to share today is uh, we are going to have uh, self-paced training for this object making in our uh, Graphisoft Learn portal soon. So in order to get uh, any information, please reach out to us. Uh, so and following this, there are uh, interesting presentations coming along. Please stay back and then get benefited. Thank you, guys. Thank you, Vima. So now we move on so to the next. Now we topic. move on to the next topic, which is uh, introduced by my colleague Rima. That will provide you with more information regarding Graphisoft Learn, and will share how we can leverage on this platform to amp up your BIM knowledge. So Rima, uh, please go ahead. The stage is yours. Yeah, so uh, thanks Marcelo. So let's just go through uh, Learn Portal. Uh, I would like to introduce our Graphisoft Singapore Malaysia Learn Portal, which has been launched this February. And uh, let me take you through what this Learn Portal is about and um, how you can be benefited with it. So basically, um, February this year, we have launched this uh, Learn Portal where we have actually uh, brought up all our trainings that can be useful for our users in Singapore as well as in Malaysia. So at the moment, what you uh, see on the screen, if you follow the this link, you shall be able to uh, you shall be able to see and visit our Learn Portal. So let me just take you there. Uh, also, before uh, I talk further about it, let me just uh, let me just share with you that in order for you to log on to this Learn Portal, you would need your Graphisoft ID. So Graphisoft ID is uh, your unique ID, which you will be using for all uh, Graphisoft related products and services. And this is like one uh, uh, email ID that you would be using across uh, the products and services offered by Graphisoft. And I will be sharing more about how would you be able to create that and use it in some time. But uh, for the meantime, let's just visit the, uh, the portal. So if you log on to our portal using GSID, you shall be able to see all the courses that are listed there, which also includes our trainer led online courses and also our webinars. Uh, if you browse through, you will also see our BIM manager program listed there, which is um, quite famous now and um, is, is, a, is a very fast selling program as well. So uh, let me just show you one by one. Uh, if I just turn on uh, or I click on the trainer led online courses. So our basic as well as advanced trainings are all listed under the trainer led now. And um, you will notice uh, we have also introduced a new training called GS BIM collaboration, which will be coming up in May. OK, so just uh, feel free to click and browse through any of these trainings and you should be able to see all the content uh, there that you will be learning that you will be learning uh, on this particular uh, under this particular training. OK, so in case you want to purchase any of these trainings, you can just click on uh, the training itself and click on purchase. Also take note uh, as a as an SSA, SSA um, at SSA, if you are if you are in under SSA program, you shall be benefited with the discounts as well. So make sure you apply your coupon to get the discounts. So you can simply key in the the coupon code here and just click on 
apply so this uh, these trainings some of them are also available for free and some of them are also uh, discounted uh, heavily so just uh, make use of your ssa benefit and key in the ssa coupon code here going back to the catalog again uh, we have, we, as I mentioned, we will be introducing the GS BIM collaboration training as well. Under this training, we will be discussing uh, teamwork, and also we will be discussing coordinations within a coordination tool within Archicad for clash checking and issue management and so on. We will also be discussing about IFC project manager, IFC translator, and so on. So stay tuned. This one is coming up in mid-May. Let me just go back to my slides now and. Let's talk about uh, Graphisoft ID. As I mentioned that this is your unique ID which will connect you to all Graphisoft products and services. So in case you are already um, MyArchiCAD or BIMX or BIM component uh, user, um, chances are you already have a Graphisoft ID. So be benefited with it. That this ID will also be used for your license management. So you have to take note that creating a gra Graphisoft Graphisoft ID is one thing and the other thing is also that you have to link this Graphisoft ID with your company portal as well. So um, for creating, you can just uh, use the link in on the screen right now. And if you click on this link, it will take you to this particular page and you can just click on sign up and fill in the details here and you shall be able to create the Graphisoft ID. Going back to the presentation again. Uh, also take note, there are two different ways of doing it. So you have to identify what is your license type. Is it a soft key or a key plug? Because uh, the process of creating or linking your GSID with the company portal will be uh, slightly different. So if you are able to follow, there are uh, um, help center articles on it or do reach out to us. But let me just take you one by one to these uh, steps. So in case you are using a software key, you will have to down download the license manager tool. Uh, don't worry if you do not follow uh, alongside right now. I will be sharing these links in the chat in a while. So you have to uh, click on, uh, you have to download the license manager tool and within the license manager tool, you will be able to uh, log into your Graphisoft ID again and link it with your company uh, portal, uh, company pool as well. Okay, another way, uh, for the key plug is that uh, you have to open up Archicad and under the help menu you will get license information and via license information you can actually connect Graphisoft ID with the license and again you have to log in and it shall be you shall be able to connect it with your company account. All right so those are the two things that you need to take note of. Uh, so within Archicad, you can go to license information and from there you can connect to the company pool. Um, also take note, um, um, this uh, also connects you to the SSA website and there are a lot of contents available on our SSA, uh, uh, web, uh, SSA downloads, under our SSA downloads, so feel free to browse through. There are a lot of new add-ons that have come up, so uh, do take a look at those. Um, also, uh, as, my, as my colleague Vimal also mentioned a while ago that we will be putting up the object creation uh, training, self-paced training uh, in our learn portal soon. So stay tuned for that. Apart from that, we will also be coming up with uh, the interior designing self-paced training, basic architect self-paced, Solibri basic self-paced, Solibri rule set manager, which will be trainer led and also our uh, Solibri API uh, trainer led as well. So a lot uh, of trainings coming up soon. So um, keep uh, keep yourself tuned with it and we will be uh, surely bringing a lot more to you. So that's all from my side. Do reach out to me or any of my colleagues if you have any issues or you would want to get some more information. Thank you so much. Thank you Rima. Thanks for this great overview on Graphisoft Learn. So now next in our agenda is the topic on historic architecture using GDL. So allow me to welcome on stage our colleague Mark from China to share with you a real case study uh, on this topic. Uh, so stay put and enjoy this presentation. Please go ahead, Mark. Thank you, Masalo. Uh, now we are going to talk about uh, how we are going to how we are going to use GDO to make our life easier. Uh, let me start with this historical uh, architectures. Uh, 
uh, by using GDO. So this is a project uh, um, I'm gonna take in as an example today, but I'm not go through the whole project. If you have interest in, in the project and uh, the designers, we actually have a uh, interview videos of this uh, designer and his project on our website. You can search for that. Uh, I'm gonna pick in two components of this type of the project to explain how we're using GDO uh, to solve our problems in our daily work. Before we go to the uh, components, uh, let me give in, uh, a few ideas about uh, historical building in China. So Chinese historical building, uh, they've been known uh, as wooden structure. And uh, back to that time, everything is prefabricated and uh, assembling on the building site. Uh, but uh, if, we, if we go back in time, we don't have the modern factories. That means uh, what we have is actually just a small family run workshops, a lot of workshops. How to make these workshops uh, working together uh, to make sure that all the sub components or components they were contribute is actually fit to each other. So they creating a modular system running behind. So basically the rules, they have the standards. Uh, these rules, this modular system also help with the larger scale building activity there. So this is how they make everything work. Like every, like uh, all the prefabricated uh, type of the building, uh, we all start from small and detailed components of the buildings to make these components fit with each other, not just uh, you know uh, being funny. You know uh, when the size that uh, when the size is not fitting, so you might facing a lot of uh, problem on the building side when you try to assemble in it. So that's not the not not the aim there. So we have to strictly follow the modular system they were creating by that time. So in this modular system, they have uh, they have uh, three uh, three three types of measurement units. What we call tai qi fen. On the left, right side of this slide, you can see uh, each unit is convert to each other. Okay. But we, when we're talking about buildings, so we have the first thing to decide uh, to, to decide the size of the building is actually the hierarchy level. So basically, this building will represent the social position of this person. So let's say you are an architecture in Song, Song Dynasty, you try to design a building for the empire or the or his relatives. So you're supposed to give in uh, based on the social position, uh, you're supposed to pick the right size for them because that will represent their social positions. So based on the hierarchy level, they have created eight types of this module system. Okay, each type will fit the different hierarchy levels. So on the left side, I didn't translate it. But basically, this is a screen capture that I uh, I get from the uh, basically the national the national uh, architecture design standard of the Song Dynasty. So in this in this table, you can you can say if you build uh, if you try to build the, the building for the high position high social position person. So you let's say you are going to creating a building with nine to eleven rooms. So what you can the module system you're gonna pick is level one. So when the building size is bigger, so the component size, the, the component size is also bigger. So the module system you are going to pick is actually the bigger one. So it makes sense, right? This is how they work. This is how the constru uh, construction pro process uh, there, okay? From very small components, let's say this is sub components, uh, because of the size of the building, you have to pick the right uh, module system. Then, with this sub components, you are able to assemble it uh, into a component. With every component, different components in position, you are finally able to get to the whole building. So, this is a construction process by that time. Uh, if we look at the how we are going to uh, simulizing uh, this construction process with digital design system, which is being towards us. Okay, what do we have to do? First of all, we know it's prefabricated, 
these subcomponents. So in our digital system, it's more like uh, we have to predefine some objects. Okay, these objects based on the hierarchy level, uh, the size of the objects is different. Okay, this different is not just a skill up different. Most likely, they were like a, a partial of these components. Let's say that any of the components has to be, you know, extend longer or rising a bit higher. Uh, so this has to be best to be the parametric editable so that will fit in the working scenarios so if you look at if we make the conclusion here we have to uh, creating some predefined object and also this object has to be parametric editable actually GDO is made for that they they are perfectly for this uh, working scenarios so that's why the GDOs come pops up in this kind of the project. All right, now you know the logic behind uh, this historical building. I'm not seeing the full picture, but generally rules you have understanding from it. Uh, let's pick up pick up the first item, what we call uh, in this type of the project. On the left side is the wrong, is the wrong one, okay? This is most of the people, how they understand in this dogo. But uh, the right one is actually correct one. Uh, so this thing is much more complex. If you go to, if you have a chance to visit uh, Forbidden City in Beijing, uh, this thing might be the first thing caught you in the eye uh, once you getting closer to the building because they they are huge and uh, they have lots of details. So this dogon contains five sub subcomponents. So these subcomponents, based on the hierarchy of the building, of course, these subcomponents are, are size are different. Also, uh, it's not just the hierarchy of the building cause the size different. Also, the style of the the dogo is also gonna cause a different. So what we're looking here is like something looks like very same, but but in detail, their size are different. So this is why we have to make it parametric editable. So the first thing we're dealing with this thing, uh, dealing with G this, this type of GDO is embed formulas in GDO code. But when we're talking about formulas, architects always uh, feel confusing. They think formulas, what formulas we're talking about. I don't know any uh, coding skills. I don't know, I, I don't create any formulas there. Actually, this formula is exactly the design regulations, the design rules you're gonna follow. Uh, except uh, you you read you read from the design uh, regulations, uh, let's say design standards that you get from government, you transfer those uh, those uh, rules into a language that uh, that, that uh, computer can understand. Basically, you need a basic, very simple mathematics, and you need to uh, know how to talk into a uh, computer. In this case, we're using if, then, and, and if. Basically, under one condition, how this uh, how this outcome will shows, then what then we we're putting a little bit uh, mathematics to 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 calculating the right size in different hierarchy hierarchy level of the building. Okay, this is very simple actually. Uh, it's it's not good. Uh, it's very much like we're talking to people. Just uh, we have to using the right grammar. Of course, like I said in the previous slides, uh, not just the hierarchy of the building cause a difference. Also, the a different style are gonna cause the size different. So it's like, uh, basically exactly the same. We use if sentence and also the very simple mathematic. Uh, once we embed those uh, formulas in the GDO, uh, the outcome shows like this. Okay, uh, you don't have to create, you don't have to modeling uh, these components one by one. You just skip the modeling uh, phase. What do you need to do? Just uh, pick the right style or right uh, or, or the right module system. Then just pick the right the right options in the setting menu. Then you have the components. Uh, which is pretty fast and 100% accurate because you are not picking, uh, you are not, you are not uh, uh, modeling it one by one because somehow people, can, because these things can be a lot. Somehow you can make uh, wrong at somewhere or sometime. 
but everything once everything uh, be coded, all you need to do is just pick the right options. So after you have those, what you have to do is just uh, like uh, Lego games, assembling them. Okay. Of course, there's more styles. I'm not go big into it. I'm just uh, showing some of uh, showing some pictures to you guys. Uh, because well, uh, the the working principle is might be might look uh, uh, simpler, but uh, the real case more all, always complex. The small styles of this uh, component, but if you go to the uh, Forbidden City, you can see all of them. Another item is roof. Uh, by the previous case, uh, what you guys saying is that uh, we pick the options, we input the numbers, okay? Uh, but uh, we, as a designers, we always prefer uh, visualized feedback. So that's why we picking this item as an example. This roof on the right side, again, it's wrong. Uh, most of the people understanding the roof trust that is actually parallel to each other, but it's not. Most of them is parallel to each other, but the, at the last quarter of the beam, uh, it's, uh, this, this roof truss goes radiance. So, also, but this is, this is just the one small part of this special component. They have more. So, again, uh, with different hierarchy of the building, of the building you try to design, uh, the, roof is, the roof size is different. Also, the style. There are, because of the weather difference, the roof in south of China and north of China, they shows differently. This is caused by styles. So what we did is creating this hotspot to giving designers a visual feedback to graphic editing their object to make sure this object can be fit in their uh, current projects. Like we can we can add in uh, hot spots at the corner of the roof, so we can adjust the rising of the corner. Uh, also, we can arrange the this how this roof trust align. Uh, how we can we can arrange this roof trust as we uh, as we uh, wishes as we expect it. Uh, again, uh, different styles. You need uh, setting this roof or object uh, differently. Uh, let's say the function when the while, while the function is different on the uh, let's say on the when the function is different also the, this roof shows quite different. On the right side of this picture is actually a temple. So when you try to build a temple, the roof shows you know, something like this. Okay. But uh, let's let's skip up skip out. Uh, uh, let's let's jump out from the historical building. But while we're talking historical buildings, you with GDO, you might thinking, okay, this historical building is not my my target. Okay, I'm not dealing with this uh, this type of building. Uh, with, I'm not dealing with type of project. Actually, even in China, in mainland China, just a very small portion of the architects they dealing with this type of projects. But I'm trying to say is here, GDO is not just uh, made for this, let's say, prefabricated uh, type of the building for the Lego game. It's not just for that. With GDO technology, with GDO skills, you can, uh, it's actually can make your uh, life daily work, can make your life easier by creating more, by offering you more user friendly, also enhance the efficiency here. Uh, let me give you a few more examples. This example is a regulation check. So basically, uh, while we're doing the designs, uh, we, we have to offer enough head rules in the staircase. Uh, on flight segment, we have 2.2 meters height. On the landing, we had uh, it's two meters height. Uh, also, uh, to, uh, to, uh, based on the safety issues, uh, safety issues, we have to extend the flight flight segment uh, at, at both ends by 300 millimeters. Uh, then we have to draw this dash line. You can see what this red pointer pointed at. Okay, we have to draw these dash lines in our construction documentation documents. So this is uh, one of our uh, climbs. They, uh, our climbs, they create, uh, they create a small object. So basically, uh, this is a very small and simple object that are created by our users. This is pure 2D. 
uh, basically you don't have to draw any lines and all to offset work. You just put in this object in the right position uh, with, uh, with uh, uh, editable hotspots. You are able to stretch it. You are able to move it. So you have the dash line there. You are able to tell, does this creating enough head rules for you in, in your design? So it's very simple. And creating this such objects is also easy. It won't create, uh, it won't take you so much, so much times. Another case is this uh, efficiency, uh, is this uh, ob object in the elevation dimensions. It helps with uh, uh, enhance uh, the efficiency of your, you know, well, especially when you're trying to create in documentations. This is a very dummy object in China, uh, residential towers. Uh, on elevations, we have to add in those uh, liner dimensions and also the uh, level level height dimensions, level height dimensions. So basically without object, if you want uh, using default tools of ArchiCAD dimension tool, let's say that you want to create in liner dimensions like here, uh, basically you have to click on the on the points that where you need these dimensions one by one. And if you want creating three liner dimensions, then you have to do uh, many times. Uh, I guess everybody know what I'm trying to say here uh, because I, I guess everyone's familiar with ArchiCAD uh, default functions. But with these objects, well, I'm not saying these objects work for uh, every type of the building, but if your building, let's say it's a residential or office building who has standard uh, standard stories, then you this, this object can help. Uh, architectures as designers, you familiar with uh, your designs, so you know how many stories there is, and, and also the story height. What you need to do is just uh, uh, set set the value here in the uh, in the right. Then all you need to do is just to put in these objects uh, to the right position. You may find uh, uh, some uh, special cases like the roof height because of the, the devices you're putting on the roof is quite different, uh, even for the for each building. So we're adding some uh, hot spots there so you can stretch it. Uh, even though you're doing something wrong like what I did here, so all you need to do is just go to the setting menu and uh, you know set it right. Then you have the all the dimensions you needed on the elevations. I believe the on, in Singapore this this uh, uh, documentation shows differently, but it, you know you know what I'm talking about. And also, especially when you try to mirror, I, I mean, if you know the elevation dimensions that uh, offered by ArchiCAD default, uh, every time you, we try to mirror, then uh, the text position always not in the ideal positions. So. I have to adjust them one by one every time. But if you're using GDO, uh, it's no problem. Uh, last part of my presentation, I want to talk about uh, programming. Uh, I know, uh, I know, most of the time when I when I face to architects, we're talking about programming. Uh, they feel a little, a little bit uncomfortable. Uh, but actually, program thinking is everywhere now. Uh, Algorithmic design is actually one of the programming. Uh, instead of you uh, input script, uh, they offer you a graphic uh, UI, so you are able to use in nodes and combine functions to make it work. But behind that is programming thinking. And also programming is aimed at solving problems very, 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 very much like uh, architect architecture design. We, uh, we as designers, we try to solve problems. We're not just creating things pretty, okay? We try to solve problems. Pretty is uh, something come come along with that. So uh, at the last the last page of my presentation, I want to say is that uh, uh, with GDO, it can extend the design possibilities. The sky is limited, but uh, we are not. So try it today. Uh, it can make your life easier. And this is all I want to say. Uh, thank you. Then back to Masalo. Thank you very much, Mark. Uh, that was a very interesting case study, and it's uh, very inspiring to see how the GDL programming is helping you 
from the simplifying the processes that normally are super complex. So um, I would like, to, so with this, we reach out the end of our user day sharing session. I would like to thank you all for staying through the whole session.